time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop It, Swab, Shampoo Plus A. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. And now, for the first time on What's My Line, the Droodles expert and author of a new political satire, I'm for me first, Mr. Roger Price. Uh, Our button. He flirted with me. Uh, now I'd like to introduce a girl whose trademark right here is something that she has an awful lot of, and it's made out of diamonds, and she has a lot of those too, I hope. Arlene Francis. Thank you, Roger. That was very nice indeed. And now perhaps our happiest panelist is coming on now. Uh, because he has recently published a book that is now tops on the bestseller list, Don't Go Near the Water, which is hilariously funny, and so is he, Bennett Surf. <laughs> well, now I'm going to introduce our panel moderator. He's just back from fly casting for trout up in Canada. Robert Trout and the seven little trouts he caught. And he's a man with the reddest face in New York tonight, Mr. John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Actually, I do have a red face, but it's not because of any faux pas. I've been up visiting Mr. and Mrs. Pearlie Terrell in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, 16 miles from Canada, and their son, Bill, who's a... Um, Superintendent of schools in Menominee, Wisconsin, tried to teach me how to fly cast. And I kept watching the fly because I thought it was going to go in my ear all the time and got sunburned that way. <laughs> well, we're going to be up to our old tricks tonight. No flies around tonight at all. Just some people with interesting occupations with which we trust will give the panel a good deal of trouble. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. We'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Now let's meet our first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Just sign right there. Eliz Abed. <laughs> Do none. Elizabeth Doonan. Is that right? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Noonan? Yes. And where are you from? From Scotland. From Scotland? Yes. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> Whereabouts in Scotland? Newton Mearns, Glasgow. Newton Mearns? Yes. Just outside of Glasgow? Yes. Ah, that's fine. This uh, is the panel. You probably haven't seen anything as formidable in Scotland. <laughs> but don't worry about it. You come with me now and we'll see if we can do to give them some trouble. Will you sit down right here, please? And I wonder if, coming all the way from Scotland, you've been in the United States long enough to know how we score on this oh, program. Yes, you do? Fine. If you know how to score, let's let everybody at home and our friends in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> all right. Panel, Miss Doonan is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Miss Doonan is... What you do, something that can be done outside of Scotland as well as in Scotland? Yes. Uh, can it be done by both men and women? Yes. Could I do it? Yes. It doesn't require special training, then? No. Uh, yes, it, it does not, no. Is it something that can be done indoors? Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would think that Miss Doonan had given the right answer. Well, in a way, you could say it could be done indoors. Well, is it done in an enclosure, usually, rather than in the great open spaces? Yes. Uh, is it inside of something that is out of doors? Yes. 
Is it out of doors on the ground rather than on the sea? On the ground. Does it move about? Yes. Is it some means of transportation? Yes. Is it more prevalent in Scotland than in, let us say, New York City? Yes. No, you mean, uh, uh, do, 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 no, no, I don't think it's more prevalent in Scotland than it is in New York City, do you? Really? Let's have a small conference. All right, let's give a no then, shall we? Miss Dorothy, I think we have to give you a no answer, but congratulations. That rest in Europe did you wonders, Mr. Price. Uh, well, I'm trying to think of what, of what uh, uh, this is. I have a small doodle here, a scotch doodle. This is called an octopus playing the bagpipes, or vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> now that I thought, I still don't know. Uh, does this, uh, do you use some sort of equipment with wheels when you're performing? Yes. This isn't in the nature of a service that you do. Yes. Uh, does this, uh, do you get mixed up with another human being there while you're doing this? Oh, yes. Is this other human being a small size? Oh, lots of sizes. <laughs> no, so you get a no. They're not just small size. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Well, may I ask if you are at the wheel of this vehicle, Miss no. Doonan? Three down you're and not. seven to go, <laughs> Mr. Surf. Miss Doonan, uh, does this vehicle that you were connected with Run without a motor. Huh? <laughs> uh, I, I would like to isolate the vehicle. Uh, is there? Is I? I'm guessing that there is no motor in it. Am I right or wrong? Oh no! Yes, there must have been it. There is a motor, is a motor in it. There is a motor in it. Yes. Oh, you fooled me. <laughs> I think I know what Bennett's getting after, but we give him a no answer anyway. That's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, then you have a friend who is also attached to this. Or yes. an acquaintance, and uh, you have a motor. Uh, do you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, there's a motor somewhere about. Mm -hmm. uh, is do you take or punch tickets? Yes. <laughs> Are you a conductor of some kind? Yes. Uh, uh. Is it either a bus or a streetcar? I regret to say the only place I've ever been in Scotland was Prestwick, and I didn't get to see much of the streets. Are you a streetcar conductor? Yes, a bus conductor. A bus conductor. Oh, a bus. Well, actually, it was, it was overthrow all the rest of the cards over anyway. That's oh. the best thing to do. There. That's absolutely right. A bus conductor, and you've been doing it for 20 years, haven't yes, you? Yes, 20 years. 20 years. In Glasgow? Years past. In Glasgow? Yes, well, it's out of Glasgow. It's a Newton Merlin, so it's seven miles by Glasgow. Do the Scotchmen always ask for transfers? <laughs> <laughs> What's the fare on a, on a Scottish bus? Pardon? What's the fare? Oh, they're all, they vary. They're not all the one fare, you know. They're not like here. Sometimes <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of haggis, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is, a bit of haggis. <laughs> well, Miss Doonan, we had a wonderful time having you with us. Thank you very much Thanks for being our much. guest. Nice Thank to have had you on What's My Life. Thanks. Good night. Well, a very good beginning, panel. Let's see what you can do with challenger number two. Will you come in and sign in, please? George? Thorpe, with an E, right? <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Thorpe? Webster Groves, Missouri. Webster Groves, Missouri? Yes, sir. Feel better now? Yes, sir. <laughs> Got lots of moral support? That's right. You're all set? Now look at the panel. That'll unnerve you. Come with me. <laughs> Come on in and sit down. Do you know how we score this operation, Mr. Thorpe? Yes, sir. Good. If you do, let's let everybody at home, those with us here, know exactly what your line is. Mr. Thorpe is also salaried. And let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Well, you made the audience very happy with what you do, Mr. Thorpe. Does it make you happy, too? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, 
Do you work for a profit-making organization? You said he was salaried, didn't you, yes. John? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're getting ready to move your finger over to that sign with the money, aren't you? No, not no? me. I'm just scratching my chin. <laughs> I'm sunburned. Well, then I'll have to stay with it. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, do you deal with men and women in your job? This is a very interesting question, don't you think? <laughs> Would you like me to take one of the sexes? Which one are you going to take? Since you have asked the question in the dual context... I just said, would you... Before you did that, I said, would you like me to take them one at a time, John? Now... No, actually, we feel it's within our compass to swallow this question whole and give you a no. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. One down to nine to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Mr. Thorpe, uh, before I hit which sex it is you work with, uh, you look like a more or less collegiate type. Uh, is this... The work that you do got anything to do with either athletics, college athletics, or something to do with the college? No, sir. Nothing? Nope. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. You should have stayed with the sex. Should have stayed with the sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'll learn that someday. <laughs> Let's not be preoccupied now, Paddle. <laughs> I'm trying to read Bennett's mind. I'm sorry. I will. Um, I'm going to stay away for that for, for a minute. Uh, is your work primarily involved with the service, Mr. Yes, Thorpe? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you work indoors? Yes. Would you call yours a desk job? No. No desk job this. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Price. Mr. Thorpe, does this work of yours entail a pretty good judgment on your part? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would say this. There is an element of judgment involved, as there is with all human endeavor, but I would consider that most of Mr. Thorpe's work could be done by rote. It's a problem, and it's problems to be solved, and it's solved usually by usual and uh, traditional lines, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that makes it four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Well, you're back to me, and I'm getting right back to the facts <laughs> again. <laughs> I want it settled. Are there human beings that you deal with? Yes, ma'am. Are the human beings more female than male? Yes. I knew they had to be, Mr. <laughs> Thorpe. <laughs> Now that I've seen you. Would you like the rest of us to leave the stage uh, no. and just leave you two alone? No. Mm -hmm. Are they young women? Are they uh, younger rather than older? Okay. Now there's a dreadful question to ask a man. <laughs> You'll take them all, son. <laughs> I would say this. I do not feel that it's proper that we should put Mr. Thorpe in the position of having to answer that question. And I will withdraw it. He, well, you won't withdraw it, did you say? I will withdraw it. All right, it is withdrawn. And now you know. <laughs> Good. I don't know exactly what he does, but I know who he does it to. <laughs> <laughs> do you speak to these women, Mr. Thorpe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you help them in some way? Yes. Are they better off having come to you for some service? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I would say if all goes well, they could be so described, yes. Uh-huh. Do you teach them anything? Yes. Could you teach Dorothy and I the same thing? I think so. <laughs> You're willing, Dorothy? <laughs> all right. Uh, and whatever it is that you teach them, you teach them indoors, not outdoors. Is that correct? That's right. Uh-huh. Does it have anything to do with uh, uh, any kind of activity, physical rather than mental? Yes, F physical. Uh-huh. Mm. Getting to be more fun all the time, Dorothy. Uh, is there any music? <laughs> <laughs> is there any music playing when you teach them what? Off and on. <laughs> better all the time. You want to dance around that one for a while? <laughs> Do you ever touch them? Sometimes. Off and on? It isn't dancing, is it, Mr. Thorpe? No. Yes, there it you is are. not. <laughs> yes, it is not dancing. Yes, it no. is not dancing. Is there any kind of physical exercise? Yes. 
<laughs> Did it, uh, would it have any to do with reducing these women? Yes. Oh, it does. Are you, it, you teach them how, uh, you put them on some sort of a reducing exercise? Yes, yes. I, I don't know what you'd call your job. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, Arlene. Actually, the official title is Exercise Instructor in a Ladies Reducing Salon. And what's the address, Mr. Thorpe? <laughs> <laughs> Not so much for myself, Mr. Thorpe, but the millions of women that are watching right oh, now. Oh, come along now. Come along well, now. They're all over the United States. <laughs> That's how I felt about it. Mr. Soap, what about this Rockefeller diet? Isn't that putting you out of business? All these uh, diets by which ladies can not reduce... Not as of yet. <laughs> not yet. I hope it doesn't. No, I think we're getting into an area where we could argue around in circles for a long time, but the human animal being what the human animal is, I think that there'll be a ready market for Mr. Thorpe's services. For I do too, to John. I couldn't I agree too, with yeah. you more. And this is no reflection on anybody I know by name specifically at all. <laughs> Mr. Thorpe, we had a load of fun. I hope you did too. Yes. It's very good to have had you with us as our guest. Thanks very much for being with us. Fishing poles and flies yet. Well, now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which my friends on the panel are blindfolded. And uh, are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> all right, panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with Bennett Surf. Thank you. <laughs> Would your uh, principal activities be likely to be chronicled in Variety and the entertainment pages of the newspapers? Mm, yeah. Miss Kilgallen? Uh... Are you a performer? Yes. Mr. Price? Uh, are you a uh, handsome type leading man actor? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid that um, I will have to answer that question for our guest. That would be a big fat yes to that. Miss Francis? Uh, that's a big fat yes. Mm-hmm. But he's not a big fat leading man. Uh, <laughs> Would you perform mostly in the picture industry? Yes. Mr. Sir? Uh, did I detect any hint of an English accent in your answer? Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Southern English. <laughs> Mr. Gilgallon? Are you more pictures than stage? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Price? Uh, do you have a, a, a Red Hot movie on Broadway now? Do you have a Red Hot movie on Broadway now? Mm. No. No. That's one down to nine to go, Miss Francis. Uh, it, it was decided that y you are English. Is that what Bennett uh, said? Well, it was decided that there was a trace of English accent in our I guest's present mode of speech, yes. Oh, well. <laughs> Are you taking me down the primrose path, John? I'd <laughs> love to, Marie. Just love to. <laughs> well, then, I think I'll just have to come out with it and ask if it is an English motion picture actor. Uh, yes. Mr. Sir? Uh, do you happen to have a little daughter who is named after the relative of somebody we love very dearly on this program? Uh, yes. Uh, James Mason. James Mason is right, then. <laughs> Rogers, so that you will not think ill of us. Actually, the Red Hot Motion Picture doesn't come into New York, I think, until midweek, Thursday. Uh, Thursday, the Thursday, second of August, no. yes. Bigger than life. Then it'll be very red hot. Yes. Oh, boy. Well, uh, actually, you produced this, did, didn't you? Yes, huh? yes. And acted? In it? Yes, both. Both of them. Yes. Good. Mason, Mason, why didn't you bring... all people who are interested in taking pills, for good or bad. Oh, yes. Why didn't you bring Portland with you? 
Well, Portland, unfortunately, she's already worked this evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. You were with an old colleague. Too far. Yeah. <coughs> How old is Portland now? Seven and a half. It should be added that Portland is, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Mason's daughter and is named after Portland Hoffer, uh, who's Fred Allen's wife. And uh, we'd hope to have Portland here with and also have Mrs. Mason with you, but uh, as you, you said, drive them too hard. Everybody, <laughs> you work them all the time, do you? All the time. Yes. Well, I I can't get my wife to do a lick. Tell me what the score is on this. <laughs> well, I'd love to do something like that. I have an unplayed to... boy. I'm sorry, Miss Mason. Aren't you going to come back to the theater? Um, I don't think so. Not for a while. No. Well, I'm I'd sorry. like to, but there, there are a lot of things keeping me busy, which I quite enjoy. Well, it's nice to be busy, but we miss you in the theater. Well, thank you. But we are very happy to have had you here with us tonight. Thank you very much, sir, for being our Come guest. And would you say good night to the family? All right. Cattle, you're doing very well tonight. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. We have enough time, I think, to give you a little trouble. Will you come in and sign in, please? Dar, Ro, C. Mm hmm. Jambrek. Dorothy Jambrek. Is that right? <laughs> uh, Mr. Mrs. Miss. Miss Dorothy Jambrek, and where are you from? Kenosha, Wisconsin. Kenosha, Wisconsin. Wonderful. Look at the panel, if you will. Come with me, if you will. Sit you down right here. Do you know how we score this operation? Yes, Fine, then let's let everybody know exactly what your line is. Just about three minutes. Miss Jambrek is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with Mr. Price. Uh, do you deal in services, Miss Jambrek? Yes. Do you both men and women avail themselves of your services? Yes. Uh, do you have a place where they come to see you there to get ser uh, to be servicees? Yes. Is this indoors? <laughs> Pardon? If this is indoors. Yes. Might it be called an office in the broad sense of the word? Yes. Uh -huh. When you uh, do what you do, are these people, do they go away feeling better? Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> some of them, sometimes, uh, yes. In other words, it's not your fault if they don't. No. <laughs> uh, does it uh, change their appearance in any way? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Uh, this service that you give to these people, um, is it in any advisory capacity whatsoever? No. 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 Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Jambrake, do you work for a profit-making organization? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss <clears throat> Kilgallen. Then do you work for some form of government? Yes. Where did you say you come from? Kenosha, Wisconsin. Do you work for the state government? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Price. Uh, will your work be, get, involve you in the uh, forthcoming hullabaloo with the politics? I beg your pardon. <laughs> Right. Will your work get you involved with the election? No. no. Five no. down and five to go, Miss Francis. Is there any paperwork in your job? Yes. Does the paperwork have anything to do with uh, licenses of any kind? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Sambrek, we still haven't discovered what kind of government work you do, except that it is not the state. Is that right? That's right. Uh, would it be local work? Yes. Has it uh, then something to do with Kenosha? Yes. What do I know about Kenosha? <laughs> uh, what do you know, sir, about Ms. Kenosha? Miss Jambrick said nothing. You know nothing about She's Kenosha. She's absolutely right. <laughs> uh, one of the few cities I've never been in. Uh, is this work anything to do with some kind of a license bureau? No. No. Nope. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you work for the executive branch of the government, of this local government? No. No. And I'm going to flip the cards because this is going to need some explanation, and I don't think you are going to get it in the next three no's anyway. Miss Jambrek is an alimony clerk. She receives and makes payments in the municipal court. If you have to pay it, you send the money to her, and then she makes out a check and sends it to whoever is to receive it. And some people are made happy, and some yes. people aren't, you know? And Miss Jambrek, thanks very much. You gave them a lot of credit. Nice to have you with us. Good night, ma'am. Good to see you.
By the way, it's not too happy a comment on our way of life these days, I guess, but just if you wondered how Miss Jambrek keeps busy, she handles 550 active accounts as an alimony clerk. Oh. And now, until next In week, Kenosha? this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. In Kenosha? <laughs> Kenosha <laughs> County. Good night, Roger. In Kenosha? Good night, Ellie. <laughs> well, hello, Kenosha. <laughs> You'll get well. <laughs> good night, Bennett, dear. Thank you. We could get a couple of our New York Broadway playboys to move out there. We could increase our business, couldn't we? <laughs> Good night, John. Oh, what a sport. <laughs> Good night, Bennett, and thank you all for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs> Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines buys our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagship. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to watch the other Helene Curtis television program, Dollar a Second.